Top story, something that we're all talking about, is the 1% tax increase. Is it going to be or is it not going to be? Let's talk to mayoral candidate Rory Ring, who, Rory, you, you have said at City Council, you, you put out a notice to people, watch City Council, because tonight they're going to charge you a 1% tax increase. Yeah, you know, and it's, uh, it's something that we really do have to pay attention to. And, and some of these things uh, obviously tend to fall a little bit under the radar. As you know, uh, my platform, one of the main pillars of that platform is lower taxes, you mm -hmm. know, as well as more jobs and a, and a quality, uh, quality of life that we all deserve here in Sault Ste. Marie. And the two are not mutually, three are not mutually exclusive. So the focus here being on the tax and how we actually make tax decisions, expenditure decisions, and who really is at the center of, of, uh, of these decisions. And, and my approach is that we really need to be thinking about who's impacted first. And it's actually the citizens that are impacted. You know, and the 1% is really 1% of a levy for an, uh, on an annual basis. Yes, the expenditures are extended over a period of time. However, it still is paid for by the citizens of Sault Ste. Marie. And we're actually talking taxes. about reserves paying for a couple of garbage trucks that are needed by the city. Yeah, I, I relate to it as, uh, you know, let's say you're running your household and you're always recommended to have a little reserve fund for emergencies, mm -hmm. you know, and that can, you know, be set for, it could be a death in the family, it could be medical emergencies. But to use it for operational activities is really something that we should give better consideration to because those reserves have to be replenished. If you take your household reserve and you spend it on a trip to Mexico, you better put that money back in because when you have a true emergency, you know, you're really going to need it. So, you know, where are we really making the critical decisions um, that impact our citizens? And that really is the nature of, uh, of the argument. You know, we've got uh, 1.6 million being spent uh, out of the the um, uh, waste reserves for technology that could have been uh, secured from uh, a private sector and operated by private sector. We have dump trucks that are being acquired out of the equipment reserve that could be used for, uh, you know, those monies could be used for other things like transit. You know, we have a challenge with, with our employers getting employees to work and our employees getting to work. So, you know, we need to be, I think, a little more creative in terms of those solutions. So, you know, you add up all those things and yes, you can say it comes from reserve, but at the end of the day, there's one, one res, real source of revenue for the city and that's the taxpayers. So I think if we have a more conscious decision-making process that really understands the impact, not just in the long term, but also in the short term, I think we can get some better decisioning on these type of matters. Now, in the in the open letter, uh, you invited the community to watch City Council this past Monday night um, to watch for that 1% tax increase. It didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't happen. It was delayed. It was pulled off. Um, you know, we don't know the rationale behind that. Was that because they wanted to go back and have a second look? Because, you know, really what we were, what I was implying was that we were not comparing apples to apples. You know, so, and we need to do that. And we need to compare apples to apples. So, you know, we think about what those trade-offs are, you know, spending 55000 saving 55000 and where do we spend that to uh, the best investment for our citizens? You know, just two, three days ago, uh, there's an article in the paper saying that they can't afford to do snow removal for our seniors. You know, and these are people who have been paying taxes, you know, all their life. My platform is trying to lower taxes so that they can stay in their own homes. And these are, these are challenges, you know, these are decisions that we really think as a, as a council and as leadership of the city really have to think about ultimately where those impacts are and how do we best serve our citizens in that respect. So, so it's over the long term, you mentioned, um, over an eight year period, is it? So there's, a, there's definitely over an eight year period where residents can pretty much be guaranteed there will be a tax increase. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, taxes have increased 11% in the last four years. You know, my platform is going to be uh, uh, working very hard with council to ensure that we freeze taxes for four years. 
and really get the house in order to make sure that we're spending efficiently. We're looking at really cost-effective measures of how we deliver services. We're benchmarking the city best in class, and not just against other northern communities, but on a global basis. You know, who is doing what the best possible way to yield the highest value for its citizen? And I, I call it that return on tax dollar. You know, we really need to start to focus on understanding when we make an investment, what yield is that to the taxpayer? What economic engine is created if we spend a little bit of money here or a little bit of money there? And how do we prioritize uh, infrastructure investment to generate economic prosperity for the greatest number, and if not all Suites? So the city needs a couple of garbage trucks. How would you have gone about it? Well, I think you uh, had a tendering process that uh, had happened, and it just you know wasn't one or two. There was a multiple uh, number of of uh, of companies that participated in that in that uh, RFP process, and I think you have to take a look. You know, what is the cost of delivering through uh, the private sector? What is the the cost of delivering through the public sector? What is the risk associated with private or public? Is there, and they did look at the mix, but at the end of the day, the best bang for the buck was if they were to privatize the, the uh, garbage collection and the uh, leaf and, uh, and um, biomaterial. So in, in my mind, that's a great instance that, that demonstrates that it's able to do. Now, you have to be very, very careful in terms of how you write the contractual agreement to ensure that we're not getting any escalations in cost you know, and at the end of that eight to 10 year period, that again, when you open it up, uh, companies have adopted the latest and invested in the technologies to be more efficient and to process uh, more efficiently. And that's their investment, not the city's investment. We need to reserve, I think, the city's money for the best applications in making life better for our citizens. And that's the economy, that's a quality of life, that's dealing with socioeconomic challenges that we may have, housing needs, you know, a hub trail, the McMeekin. So there's a lar large list. And where are the priorities mm -hmm. of that investment to give the best bang for the buck? Do you think garbage disposal sh should be privatized in the Sioux? There's been a number of uh, studies done. The uh, How CD Howe Institute has demonstrated that more municipalities are moving to the privatization of waste and uh, biomaterial disposal. <clears throat> it actually demonstrates, too, that the uh, type of of waste uh, uh, curb removal is expanding into other products, not just number two and number five plastics, but all plastics, as well as, again, biodegradable materials that include food waste. So, you know, from that perspective, the private sector is used to being innovative, to driving out the envelope, uh, meeting market demand, right? So if your community is demanding you know, food waste recycling, you know, or bio waste recycling, then, you know, the private sector looks to see how they can provide that value. Because obviously the private sector is being driven to give more for less. And I think we need to start to think as a city on how we deliver more for less. Now, if, if it does go to privatization, there's a cost involved with moving it to that, no? Yes. So there'll be, obviously, like anything, there's a cost uh, associated with it. However, we are in a circumstance where that cost is really mitigated because we've already entered into a relationship with GFL to do some of the waste uh, removal uh, services. So that cost, in my mind, would almost be negligible. Do you have a number? I do not. No. no. I mean, obviously, I'm not. Uh, so I don't have purview into the into the, right. the the inner circle of uh, of the finances of the city. Obviously, we've participated in the finance committee, but that has been more from a strategic direction. And uh, you know, however, these are things that uh, you know council needs to be fully cognizant of. What are the details with within the scope of measuring the benefit versus the cost? Again, associated to the risk to give value. So in your mind, if, it, if we went to privatization, there would be absolutely guaranteed no tax increase? I think if you move to, uh, move to uh, privatization within the waste disposal 
area. And again, that's where we are looking at only one yes. area. And that's not to say privatization of everything no, is no. the way to go. No, we're just talking about But just disposal. in waste disposal, you, I think you see it demonstrated North Bay is 100%. Toronto was moving closer to 100%. You know, Windsor is moving to a mixed model. Windsor has held their tax for eight years. Winnipeg hasn't had a tax increase in 18 years. Why are we not asking them how that's done? And is waste disposal part of that? So I think when you start to look at how we drive budget, we need to make sure again that we're investing in areas that will help us lower the taxes, like expanding the economic base of Sault Ste. Marie, like expanding the number of citizens that are participating in our economy, like expanding the value of all our assets, whether it be commercial, industrial, or residential. So it's all part and it does not stand alone. Okay, thank you so much for that information. Certainly hope that um, we helped you to understand the situation a little bit more. Candidate, mayoral candidate for uh, the upcoming municipal election is coming up. Is it going quick for you? Fast and furious, and obviously uh, all my lines are open to any of the citizens of Sault Ste. Marie that wish to discuss this issue. You know, ringformayor at uh, gmail.com, www.ringformayor.ca, and my phone number 989-4804. We'll be watching very closely, Rory. Thank you so much Thank for coming much. in today. Appreciate Always it. good to see you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. We'll be back with more news on Top Story right after this.